Hey guys, what's up and welcome to my channel. I'm Miley. If you're new here, I do a new DIY every single week, so subscribe to my channel if you would like to. This week, I have another big project ahead of me. Woo! -hoo. So the room right next door to this room, I am going to be turning into an office slash lounge space for my husband. And out of all of the rooms in the house, I think I'm most excited for this room because it's been a huge design challenge. My husband has a pretty different style from me and some of the things he wants to put in this room, let's just say, would not be my first choice or even my second. But this is his room and his space, so I wanna design him a room he is gonna love. Which means I have a lot of work ahead of me. Let's get started. Okay, to get started, I need to talk about the color I decided to paint this room. Usually, I am one to kinda gloss over the painting process because frankly, I find it kind of boring, but the color played a huge aspect in the design of this room. And by now, you know I decided to paint this room green. And getting my husband on board with this color was a bit of a challenge. He kept pushing for maybe more of an accent wall being green, but I knew to achieve the look and feel I was going for in this room, the whole room needed to be green. So basically I had to show him an entire mood board to get him to understand the feeling I was going for in this room. And finally, once he was on board with it, finding the right kind of green was also a bit of a challenge. It couldn't be so dark that it looked black, which was one of the first samples I tried out. But then it also couldn't be too light that you lost that musky, outdoorsy feeling I was going for in this room. After painting, I got to planning out the layout of this room. This is something I like to do to just get a rough idea of where everything will fit best in a room. And no, this is not to scale by any means. The only piece of furniture I had for this room was a black metal day bed that can pull out to a king size bed because this room will also operate as a potential second guest bedroom if we ever need it. But this also limited where I could put a desk and also the dimensions of a desk. And I wanted to give my husband the biggest desk I could fit in the space. So from the start, I had a feeling I was going to have to make this desk. And the final thing I wanted to put in this room was a big chunky leather chair and ottoman. One, I thought it would fit the space nicely, and two, I thought it would add to the whole loungy aspect of the room. To actually execute this design, I took this room corner by corner, and the first thing that I made for this room was a custom picture ledge. So I'm not sure if this is a guy thing, but one of the challenges of this room was the amount of things my husband wanted to hang on the walls. So I had to figure out how to nicely display everything that he wanted up on the walls. And I have done a gallery wall a million times, so I figured a picture ledge was a nice alternative, and I like the way that you can layer the photos on top of each other with a picture ledge. It creates a nice eclectic feel. And to make these picture ledges was super easy. I did have to use some questionable clamping methods to do it. I realized I didn't have the right kind of clamps, but all I did was take a piece of oak trim and glue it to the edge of a one by four. And the only cutting I had to do was cut a little 45 degree angle in each piece of the oak trim so that it met nicely in the corner when I hung it up. And to hang up these picture ledges, I used L-shaped brackets and matched the brackets up to where there were studs in the wall. Woo! And once the picture ledges were up, I finished off the corner.
So for this next corner, we have the desk, and I am not an actual woodworker, so I had to design this desk knowing I would actually be able to make it. For the base of this desk, I wanted one side to be a cube shelf unit and the other side to be a filing cabinet. I was able to find this filing cabinet on Facebook Marketplace for 10 bucks. So when it came to the cube shelf unit, I had to build it so it had the same height and depth as the filing cabinet. As for the width of the shelves, I made it so that I could fit our printer on one of the shelves. <laughs> After doing a bit of cutting and sanding, I had five pieces, two side pieces, and then three pieces for the top, middle, and shelf. And again, I am not a builder, so I put this together in the quickest way I knew. This is literally four boards screwed together, and when it came to the shelf part, I thought I was going to put pieces of wood on the side that the shelf would lay on but I didn't like the way that looked, so I ended up measuring 17 inches up from the bottom, drilling some holes, and screwing directly into the shelf piece. And the bases are done! They're great! They look great together. They match completely. Okay, so obviously I had to make the shelf and cabinet match, so I painted them black. Which, shocking, I have never in my life painted something black. And painting the shelf, I was getting serious deja vu moments of painting another cube shelf unit. But if you're new to my channel, I kind of went on a journey of finding my favorite way of painting furniture, and I think I'm almost there. For each piece, I did two coats of black paint and then finished off with a matte spray enamel. I definitely like this more than chalk paint, and also I like this more than the process I did to paint my IKEA Calyx, because this spray enamel dries so much quicker and it's just as durable. So for the most part, the desktop was really easy. I needed the desktop to be 20 inches wide so that it covered the cube, shelf, and cabinet, but then I also wanted this desk to be 8 feet long, which lucky for me, they had a pre-laminated board at Lowe's ready to go. The only annoying part was my husband had a strong desire to have a boiled linseed oil finish, and up until this week I did not know what boiled linseed oil was, but apparently it's some old school way of finishing wood, and the wood is going to get darker over time, and you have to reapply coats from time to time. So to try to make this as dark as possible in this week, I had to go in there every single day and reapply a new layer of boiled linseed oil. But after the first layer, I was able to move this on top of the shelf and cabinet, and I attached it to the pieces by screwing it in from the bottom, and then I also used those L-shaped brackets that I used for the picture ledge to attach this to the wall in the middle. And the last thing to finish up this desk is the thing I am weirdly most proud of in this room. I'm not sure why but I had to get handles for the cabinet and I had this idea of doing leather handles so I got these craft leather bookmarks and turned them into handles. Using some shoe grease, I darkened them up and then I measured and cut them down, used a really sophisticated way of making holes in the leather and attached them to the cabinet using some nuts and bolts. And this is what I was talking about when I said some of the things my husband wants to put up in the room would not be my first choice. These are two pieces that I drew, and I am not a huge fan of displaying my own art, mainly because I just critique it the whole time I'm looking at it. But since I'm hanging them up, I took this opportunity to fix up some of the blending issues I've been looking at for the last two years since I drew these. And 
and this. This was the other thing I really fought to put up, but he really was insistent on hanging up the deer skin, so I decided to try a nice little layered look to mimic the layered look of the picture ledge. And we are on to the third and final corner. This was by far the quickest and easiest. I just had to find a leather chair and lucky for me, I found a guy on Facebook Marketplace selling the exact type of leather chair and ottoman I was looking for and I got it for a fraction of the price. And the final thing for this corner was hanging some banjos that my husband has. And that finishes off the last corner. And this is the room up until this point, and dare I say, I think we are ready for the final decorating montage. And that is it guys, I love how this room turned out. This was definitely outside of my personal design comfort zone, but I had so much fun designing this room for my husband and I designed it so well, I truly don't think he's ever gonna leave it. If you liked this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, hit that notification button so that you know when I post, and I will see you guys next week. Bye guys!